Level 0. The absence of poison. This is what clean feels like, but you rarely notice it. You breathe in on a rainy morning, the scent of wet soil, ozone, and green. No synthetic fumes, no smoke, no industrial bite. Your lungs take in the air like it was made just for you, and it was. At level zero, everything works. Oxygen fuels your brain, water hydrates, not harms. This is equilibrium. This is healthy. This is the luxury of not being poisoned. But most people don't live at level zero. They visit it, briefly, then step right back into the invisible haze of civilization. Because toxicity doesn't start with a chemical plant. It starts with the couch in your living room. Level one, you walk into a new apartment. The floor is clean. The furniture looks brand new, but the air, there's a sharpness to it. You notice it only for a second, then your brain tunes it out. That's off-gassing. Formaldehyde from particle board, VOCs, volatile organic compounds from paint, varnish, adhesives. They're legal, regulated, but still present. You might get a mild headache, a scratchy throat. Your eyes sting just a little. You blame allergies or stress but your body is already registering the intrusion. In cities, level one surrounds you. Microparticles from car exhaust, synthetic fragrances in everything from laundry detergent to air fresheners, preservatives in your shampoo that disrupt hormones. These aren't enough to kill, not today, but they shift the baseline, slowly, permanently, and once your baseline changes, you stop noticing the climb. Level two. Now, the body starts fighting, not one-time doses, not accidents. This is everyday exposure, just a little too much, for a little too long. A janitor uses an industrial strength cleaner every day for 15 years. A salon worker breathes nail polish fumes for a decade. A farmer sprays pesticides each spring without a proper mask. The result? Fatigue that doesn't go away. A persistent cough. Liver enzymes are quietly rising. Headaches, rashes, mood swings, Doctors run blood tests. Everything looks normal, but something's wrong. And deep down, you know it. Your body adapts at first, then it breaks. After the Vietnam War, thousands of US soldiers returned home complaining of strange symptoms, nerve issues, cancers, deformities in children. The link, Agent Orange, a defoliant used to strip jungle cover. Years later, the toxic dioxins it carried were found to be catastrophic in low, prolonged exposure. The chemicals didn't kill them outright, they hollowed them out from the inside. Level 3. This is where you feel it, fast. Imagine winter, you're heating your house with a gas heater in a closed room. The heat feels good, but the headache starts, then confusion, then dizziness. By the time nausea hits, it's too late. Carbon monoxide, the silent killer. No smell, no taste, no color. It binds to your blood, replacing oxygen molecule by molecule. You suffocate from the inside out without ever knowing you were in danger. That's level three. You're exposed to something harmful in one short burst and your body buckles. Mercury from a broken thermometer. A powerful solvent spilled on your skin. Mold spores in a poorly ventilated attic. Your vision blurs, your hands tingle. You vomit and it doesn't stop. Survivors describe it like drowning in slow motion. The panic comes not just from pain, but from disorientation. Your brain disconnects from the world. You don't think, I'm poisoned. You think, I'm dying, and I don't know why. Level 4. At level 4, the world around you becomes the threat. The air, the water, the things you touch. You're a worker in a chemical plant, and someone forgot to shut the valve. The room floods with ammonia gas. In seconds, your lungs seize. Breathing becomes a conscious act, one that fails. Your eyes burn, your throat swells. You hit the emergency exit. If it's not blocked, you live. If it is, you don't. Or maybe you drank the wrong water. In Bangladesh, over 40 million people were slowly poisoned by arsenic in their well water. The tragedy, the wells were dug to protect them from bacterial infections. The solution became the poison. Arsenic doesn't burn like acid. It creeps, it scars your organs, it ruins your blood, skin lesions spread, cancer takes root, and yet, by the time symptoms show, the damage is done. At level four, even the right decisions can lead to toxic consequences. Level five, now we step into chaos. You're cleaning your bathroom. 
You accidentally mix bleach and ammonia. The smell turns sharp, then metallic. You cough once, then violently. You stagger out, dizzy, eyes tearing, throat closing. You've just created chloramine gas. Congratulations. It's toxic warfare in your own home. At this level, the toxins don't irritate, they destroy. Cyanide, for example, it blocks your cells from using oxygen, even if you're breathing. You suffocate with air in your lungs. It was used in gas chambers during the Holocaust. It's still used in some mining operations today. Another one? Phosgene gas, used as a chemical weapon in World War I. Just a few breaths and your lungs fill with fluid. You drown while standing up. If paramedics don't arrive fast and know exactly what to treat, you die. This is the threshold where emergency rooms go on alert, where hazmat suits come out, where accidental exposure becomes a headline. Toxins at level 5 don't care if you meant well, they don't give you a second chance, they're not slow, they're final. Level 6, there is no smell, no warning, just a fraction of a drop, absorbed through the skin, that's all it takes. This isn't just poison, this is programming. Nerve agents don't kill by brute force, they hijack your body's internal wiring. Chemicals like VX, sarin, and Novichok block the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which your nerves rely on to stop firing. Without it, your muscles never stop contracting. You inhale, but you can't exhale. Your lungs spasm, your eyes leak, your vision narrows, you vomit, then seize, then asphyxiate. Your brain remains awake, fully alert, until oxygen stops. This isn't fantasy, it's war. Tokyo, 1995. Five men boarded different subway trains during rush hour. In coordinated moves, they punctured plastic bags filled with liquid sarin. The smell was faint, like vinegar and rubber. People coughed, collapsed, choked. Thirteen died, over 5,000 injured, eyes burned, chests locked. Panic spread faster than the gas. One victim described it like being trapped inside your own skull while your body drowns without water. These agents were developed not to kill efficiently, but to terrify, to inflict suffering, to destroy not just people, but public confidence, policy, and peace. And they work fast. Exposure time can be under a minute. Antidotes exist, atropine, pralidoxime, but unless you carry them in your pocket, they're irrelevant. By the time emergency responders arrive, your diaphragm's already clenched into paralysis. VX is so potent that a single gram can kill hundreds. It's sticky, it lingers. A soldier could brush against a contaminated tank two days later and still die. Even worse, some nerve agents are binary, two safe chemicals that only become deadly when mixed, invisible, undetectable, unstoppable once released. At level six, you're not just poisoned, you're reprogrammed, and the code ends in death. Level seven, the cloud rolls in, not black, not red, but gray, forgettable, like fog. You're told it's fine, a chemical leak, but nothing dangerous. You go home, cook dinner, breathe, and then the coughing starts. Your child's nose bleeds, your skin itches, water smells like metal. A month later, a neighbor's dog dies. A year later, the tumors begin. This isn't acute poisoning. This is long-term, large-scale, and inescapable. Bhopal, India, 1984. At midnight, a union carbide pesticide plant leaked 40 tons of methyl isocyanate gas into the air. No sirens, no evacuation. Residents woke up choking. Thousands died that night. Tens of thousands more in the following weeks. Birth defects, blindness, lungs scarred forever. The cause? A malfunction. The result? one of the deadliest industrial disasters in history. Level seven isn't about the moment of exposure, it's about what happens after, what keeps happening. Chernobyl, 1986. Reactor four exploded, launching radioactive material across Europe. Residents of Pripyat watched the fire from balconies like a show. They didn't know they were being dosed. Children played in fallout dust like snow. Some died within days, Others are still dying, generations later. And it's not just accidents. Some towns are built on top of chemical waste, others near factories that accidentally dump mercury into rivers. Some water sources are labeled safe even when test results say otherwise. Not because the toxins aren't there, but because denying it costs less. That's level seven, 
There are towns where cancer is normal, where residents joke about the three-headed frogs in the pond, where parents pray their children don't drink from the wrong tap. That's not an exaggeration. That's real. That's now. And the poison doesn't leave when the victims die. It stays. In the dirt. In the rivers. In the food chain. Forever. Level 8. You feel the sting first. A pinprick. A bite. A splash. But it's what happens next that changes everything. Your blood is no longer yours. Hemotoxins, unlike nerve agents, don't stop muscles. They corrupt the very fluid that carries life through your body. Venoms from vipers, toxins from industrial solvents, and metals like cadmium and lead all do the same thing. They wreck your circulatory system from the inside. Capillaries rupture, platelets vanish, your blood thins or thickens until it's useless. Bruises spread under the skin like spilled ink. Gums bleed, noses run red, and then you bleed internally, slowly, silently. Organs swell, muscles liquefy. You may still be conscious when your kidneys shut down, when your urine turns black. Russell's Viper Venom is one of the deadliest hemotoxins on Earth. Victims in rural India describe muscle cramps so intense bones break under the strain. Some lose fingers, others entire limbs. If the anti-venom isn't available within hours, death is almost certain, and even with it, permanent damage is likely. But you don't need a snake bite to reach level 8. Just work in an unregulated battery plant for 10 years, or live near a lead-contaminated river. Lead, especially in children, interferes with brain development. It lowers IQ, alters behavior, and increases aggression. There's no safe level, not one part per million. And once it's in the bones, it stays, releasing slowly for decades. At this level, the body becomes a battlefield, not against the world, but against itself. Your immune system turns on you, your blood stops clotting, your organs drown in their own waste, and worst of all, you're still awake, still aware. The pain isn't sharp, it's deep, wet, expanding. Every breath, every heartbeat feels like sabotage. This is the kind of toxicity that doesn't kill instantly. It takes you apart, piece by piece, hour by hour, until nothing works the way it used to. And it doesn't always end in death. Sometimes you live and spend the rest of your life watching your body forget how to be alive. Level 9. You don't bleed, you don't cough, you don't gasp for air. Not yet, because at level 9, the damage happens so deep inside you don't feel it until it's too late. You're exposed to radiation, not a burn, not fire, just energy, invisible, silent, immediate. A gamma ray slices through your body like a bullet made of light. It doesn't break bones, it breaks instructions. DNA, the blueprint of you, begins to unravel, cell by cell, strand by strand. The body can't keep up, the instructions for healing are missing. Instead of regenerating, you rot. 2006, London. A man named Alexander Litvinenko sips tea laced with polonium-210, an alpha-emitting radioactive element, tasteless, odorless. By the time symptoms appear, vomiting, diarrhea, hair loss, it's too late. His organs shut down, his marrow dies. He takes three weeks to die. Doctors can't save him. The poison doesn't just hurt him, it erases the very machinery of his body. This is the level of chemotherapy at maximum dose, without safeguards. It's Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's Chernobyl's Red Forest. It's what happens when you stand too close to the unshielded heart of a nuclear reactor and inhale death before you realize it. The early symptoms are deceptively mild. Nausea, fatigue, maybe a fever. Then your immune system shuts off like a light. Your white cells vanish. Your intestines start bleeding. Your gums, your eyes, your pores, everywhere. Hair falls out in clumps, skin turns raw, you can't clot, you can't heal. Inside, it's chaos. Your cells try to divide, but can't. Your body is now an unedited manuscript of errors, deletions, and corrupted files. And the most terrifying part? You might feel better before you die. It's called the walking ghost phase. A brief window where symptoms disappear. You smile, you sit up, maybe you eat. But it's a lie. Your cells are already dead. You just haven't caught up yet. At level 9, even the air can kill you if it's charged with the wrong particles. 
and once the DNA breaks, there's no reboot, just collapse, quiet, cold, unstoppable, level 10. There are substances so toxic they don't require a dose. They require a mistake. You're in a lab. You're wearing gloves. You spill a drop of liquid metal on your latex glove. One drop. Dimethyl mercury. It takes 15 seconds to pass through rubber. It slips through your skin, crosses into your blood, passes the blood-brain barrier like it owns the place. You feel fine for weeks. Then your speech slurs. Your vision doubles. You can't walk. You die 150 days later from irreversible brain damage. That wasn't fiction, that was Dr. Karen Wetterhahn, a Dartmouth chemistry professor, a single spill through a glove. She never stood a chance. That's level 10. You don't get warning signs, you get a countdown. Fluoroantimonic acid, one of the strongest known super acids, dissolves skin, bone, even glass. If you inhale its vapor, your respiratory tract is chemically burned from the inside. Botulinum toxin, just two nanograms per kilogram can kill. That's less than a grain of salt, a million times more potent than cyanide. These aren't poisons that knock politely, they detonate. VX nerve agent kills in minutes. Ricin, extracted from castor beans, kills in hours. And chloroacetyl chloride doesn't kill you from inside, it liquefies your lungs. And the worst part? You don't even need direct contact. Some of these travel through air, through gloves, through microscopic breaks in gear, the mere presence of these agents in your environment is a gamble. Your best defense is knowledge, distance, timing. Because if you touch the wrong molecule, no amount of medicine, prayer, or preparation will save you. Level 10 poisons don't ask questions. They don't wait. They don't negotiate. They kill instantly, effortlessly, and you never see it coming. Level 11, EFU, the unknown, the ghost level. But what if you were poisoned? and no one could prove it. What if you felt the nausea, the headaches, the fatigue, but every blood test came back clean? What if the water looked fine, the air seemed clear? The doctor said, you're healthy, but you still kept breaking down? EFU, unrated, unseen, unexplained, the tornado that left no damage, the poison that doesn't leave a fingerprint, the ghost in the system. In toxicology, we classify most exposures based on damage, on how much, on how fast. But what happens when there's no trace, no substance left to measure, no toxin to isolate? You just get sick and stay sick and no one believes you. It happens. Veterans exposed to burn pits, factory workers who handled safe materials, kids in schools built on contaminated land, told there's no risk, no evidence, no concern. But the symptoms pile up. The cancers, the birth defects, the neurological disorders, and the truth takes decades to arrive, if it ever does. EFU doesn't mean harmless. It means we don't know. Not yet. The exposure happened. But there's no name for the substance, no category for the symptoms, no justice for the victims. In a world where technology moves faster than regulation and industry faster than science, this is the future of poisoning, the kind we can't see coming and the kind we can't prove when it does. EFU is the scariest level of all, because it reminds us, not all monsters leave footprints, and not all deaths get counted. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.